Happy Wednesday. I had to really think what day it was. Got an email from someone who is going to be applying for a position as a removal um, staff member. So a transfer technician, transfer assistant, whatever it may be called at the funeral home. Um, this individual, Dave, is applying for a job as one and wondered some tips and tricks, not tricks, but tips on interviewing at a funeral home. And if I had any input, of course I have input. <laughs> Opinionated carry is what we should call me. So just like any interview, this is no matter where you go to interview, don't be late. Because you asked me what time you thought I, you should arrive. Don't be late. Get there, you know, five, ten minutes early. Get in. This, Even if they sit you somewhere, you can kind of scan the place ask to use the restroom. Check out the restroom. The restroom is dirty, non-stocked. This could reflect something about the funeral home. Any business you go in, if things are neglected, either they're super busy, understaffed, or just neglect things. So little tips like this can allow you to understand something about that business itself. Now, uh, stop shrimpy oh my gosh um the, every funeral home just because they have an opening doesn't mean it's where you're supposed to work so no matter where you're interviewing you are interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you just because there's an open position doesn't mean that that's where you have to be because if you go in this position and it's a terrible place to work it's terrible management they treat you poorly, they underpay you, they overwork you, you get a bad taste for the position itself. So let's preface it that with that stuff. Now, dress professional. You're gonna know what that means to you, whether you wear a suit, whether you just wear a shirt and tie and slacks for a man. Um, since it's a man asking, it's kind of who I'm answering for. Uh, whether you wear a polo shirt and khakis, you know, if you know anything about this funeral home and has ever seen their removal team, what does their removal team wear? Do they wear suits? Wear a suit. If they wear just button-ups or polos, possibly wear that. Overdress. Always overdress. I mean, however, I have hired somebody that showed up in jeans because she spilled something on her outfit right before she was leaving the house and had nothing else clean and she was right up front about that. Did not care. That to me did not define her as an employee. So ask good questions. By this I mean, especially when it comes to the funeral business, what is the schedule for here? How often am I on call? Is it for a long period of time? Is it just for a block of time? Is it open-ended? How often Am I getting called in? What is your call volume? If they do 100 calls a year and you're on call 24 seven, potentially you may get called out 100 times during the year. Not probably gonna be the case, but that also, like if this is for you, a full-time employment, and they're paying you $100 per removal, which could be what the case is, and there's only 100 calls a year it's not a full-time position for you so do the math find out what they're paying you and how they would be paying you are they paying you per removal are they paying you per hour is this from the time they call you till you get back home is this from when you get to the funeral home and you re return from the removal are you going by yourself to places or is this going to be a two-person team these are all things to know all things to know because it makes a big difference when you're interviewing if you're taking a position where it's only going to be you you're only getting paid a certain amount you're on call 24 7 your life changes when you're on call how you live changes a bit no matter you know after a while you get a little more accustomed to it where you're a little more casual and you're not like waiting on the, at the edge of your seat all the time for a phone call. But for a long time, you're going to be that way because you just don't know when the call is going to come. And what if it comes now? And do I have all my stuff? And what if this? And what if somebody's with me? And what if my kid's with me? And what do I do with my kid? Do I have time to take them home? Do I not have time to take them home? Ask. 
questions. Anything you may have about the funeral business, ask it. Just ask it. Throw it out there. Throw it out there and ask. Um. Yeah, I'm not seeing. Oh, there they are. Um, yeah, read comments, hopefully. I know I have some people that do transfers, removals. Just post them. Post what you know about this position below this video to share a little information with people who are wanting to go into this. What should they ask going in? What have you run into that was maybe negative or questions you asked that were like, thank goodness I asked that. Thank goodness I know this information. You know, in your state, do you have to take a licensed funeral director with you on removals? Some states you do. So are you always gonna be accompanied by a licensed funeral director? All good questions to ask. So same is gonna be if you go in for a funeral director position or any position within the funeral home. I'm gonna say the same thing. Show up a little early, ask good questions, Ask to go to the bathroom. See how they treat you when you come in. Um, do they engage with you? Do they offer you water? Bring them something. If you really want this position and you already know about this place, you know, bring donuts with you. A little butt kiss and never hurt. Come on, guys. Um, but come with a list of questions that you want to know. Do not give cliche answers. I'm a people person. I'm here because I want to make a difference. I want to help people. I'm fascinated by dead bodies. Red flag. Don't say stuff like that. Like, I don't even care if you are curious about death and about dead bodies. Like saying those kind of things makes it sound like you just want access to dead bodies, <laughs> which is weird. So don't say some of those kind of things, but ask great questions. Ask good questions. $100 per removal sounds dirt cheap. I thought we'd be way more. Oh no, no. There's a lot of places that are still in the 50 to whatever range or per hour and you get paid, you know, 10 to $15 an hour. So I'm not saying that's the case everywhere, but could be, could be. So ask, ask. And, you know, if they ask kind of what qualities you have for this job, sure, you may never have done it before, but have you served people? Have you cared for anyone? Um, do you have a good driving record? Are you trustworthy? Do you have a good um, attendance? from your other jobs. You don't need the specific qualities, but do you have all these other great qualities that would make a good worker that's trainable? That's what people are looking for anywhere. Trainability, good work, attendance, attendance, attendance. Showing up, showing up for work. That is where employers are having a hard time right now is getting employees who are showing up, being dedicated, that, you know, the, the legit sickness is not, you know, an issue. I'm stuck. But I just wanted to do a quick, quick little video on this. And yes, I don't have Wi-Fi right now. So sorry if you can't catch it all. But thank you guys. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck if you guys are going to look for jobs. Good luck. Bye.